I feel like I'm just like really channeling like 80s mom with this hair today. But I didn't feel like really doing much to it, so it's just in a headband. And it's gonna stay there. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today we're finally doing another favorites video. But I actually have, I think, about a decent, almost half and half mixture of favorites video, favorite videos, favorite products, and fail products. I actually haven't had this many bad products not work for me in a long time. So normally I don't really include those in these every other month, every two months video, but I had to talk about them because they're bad and I need to get them out of my collection. But I wanted to warn you guys and just let you know before I did that. A little quick note before we jump in, I only do these videos like every two months, maybe every three months because everything that is a favorite is a product that I've tested multiple months that I've used, maybe panned, maybe rebought. So it's an actual favorite. I don't wanna just put one of these out every month just to have something up every month. Like these are actual favorites that I highly recommend. So sometimes they're products you've already heard about through my channel, sometimes they may be repeats, but they're actual favorites. And that's kind of what I want the whole point of this series, at least in my channel, to be. So I actually have two foundations as my favorites for this month, and the first one is this Too Faced Peach Perfect Comfort Matte Foundation. I bought the shade Shortbread, which I thought would be light enough for me, but it's just a little bit too dark, so I do lighten it. I am wearing it today, and it's actually, it's been a lifesaver now that it's getting hotter and hotter and hotter, and I kind of want to die because I hate the heat. I don't like it. <laughs> So this foundation is like one of my holy grails. It honestly is medium coverage that you can build up to full coverage. It is comfortable. It keeps everything matte, but I don't look like a, a raisin, right? It's a comfortable, it's literally what it says. It's a comfort matte foundation and like 100% true i love the packaging too because it's a squeezy tube and it's got a pump so you can literally squeeze out everything and then cut it open that's how i pan my last one i literally got every drop out i i love this foundation so much and because i know how great it works for me i've also been able to use this to test out other products so like primers concealers because i know 100 percent how this performs so it's kind of my baseline for testing out other products which has been really helpful when i'm testing out new things here and there so this is just such a great foundation i i love it so much and it's probably gonna be my go-to for the majority of the summer my next favorite foundation is a stick foundation from makeup revolution this is is it actually called anything i think it's just the stick foundation it's the fast base stick foundation and i have the shade f6 a little dark for me uh, but i can also lighten this and it's a favorite because it doesn't perform as well in heat as the comfort matte but it's very quick to apply it's a beautiful finish so i wouldn't say this is transfer proof the actual the comfort mat is actually transfer proof too so you're not gonna like sweat like if you if you're sweating and your face is wet and you touch it it's probably gonna come off but if you're sweating and you let it dry and then like I mean, that sounds kind of gross but never touch your face when you're sweating always just let it kind of dry on its own and then the Too faced is still transfer proof this one isn't as transfer proof but it gives you such a nice natural finish that it's just it's gorgeous and it's the only stick foundation I found that works for me and another reason why this is a favor is because I've twisted this all the way up it looks like it's almost empty but there is still product down here I kind of thought it was like the end of the product and I was about to throw it into my empties drawer but I took one of my depotting spatulas and I dug it in and there's a good this much product still in there after you twist it all the way up this is a great amount of product I almost thought it was empty and I have um a lot of use still left in this so I really appreciate that because for them it could have been really easy to just cut the amount of product right there with stick foundations you already don't get as much product as you would otherwise but this that was incredible to see and I'm glad I have more use you just got to scoop it out and it's just as great so I really enjoyed this once this runs out I'm probably going to buy another one but I'm gonna get one that's probably closer to my pale shade right now and I also, someone mentioned that they like to use a darker shade of this to cream contour. So I was thinking of picking up um, a lighter one to use as like a, um, a concealer, as a highlight, and a darker one to try cream contouring because I know the formula works for me. So I think that would actually work really well to test that out. So excited and it's affordable too affordable get it at ulta and there's like a bajillion shades there's so many shades my next favorite is a rediscovered one that 
I never really got back to because I had so many concealers I was testing out, but I'm so glad I rebought these because this has been my go-to concealer for weeks now. This is the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Concealer. Now, the shade that I used to use under my eyes was like light medium it was like a medium shade and that used to work for me and it's way too dark um the shade light pale i think is a little light for me but then i also have the shade ivory so ivory has actually been working for under my eyes which is kind of nuts because i've never been that light before i need to go outside go to the beach or something i need color <laughs> Um, so I have Light Pale and I have Ivory. I've been using Ivory. You can see I've already gotten the stopper. It's almost halfway gone already. And I like just rebought these a few weeks ago. That's, I mean, I've been going to this every, every day, quite honestly. It's full coverage. It doesn't crease. It looks amazing. And this holds up with sweat because that was my issue. I had other concealers where I liked them, but then once it got hot and I was sweating, I would see my makeup just start to dissolve around my nose and I can't have that. I need a full coverage concealer that will stick and this lasts through the heat. So this together with my Peach Perfect <laughs> has been my go-to combination. It's been there for me. Ha. Huh. So Needless to say, I love this. I also love the tip I got from the Beauty News Girls video on this to take off the sponge. It actually, it's a lot better. I need to clean this out because I'm just messy. But um, taking the sponge off worked a lot better for me too because I didn't like the sponge aspect of the concealer because I felt like I was kind of sponging off some of my foundation when I was putting it on. So I like this a lot better without the sponge. It's, it's awesome. It's affordable. Unfortunately, the shade range is not as large as I would like it to be. It does seem like it's a very light beige kind of shade range. I'm hoping they're working on that and they can extend this. I think they've already done one shade extension, but I think they need to do more, obviously. My next favorite is actually a rediscovered highlighter palette, and I haven't really been using it for face highlight, but this is the ABH Moon Child Glow Kit. I've been pulling this out fairly consistently for the last few weeks as I've been experimenting with more eye looks like this today. I've been digging into the deeper colors of my subculture palette for my Pen That palette, and I've been dipping into here, particularly for the shades Lucky Clover, Pink Heart, and Blue Ice, to give a nice tinted color, but a nice bright highlight for my inner corner. I'm not wearing it today, but I've been using Lucky Clover as my inner corner and sometimes all over my lid when I've dug into the deeper green shades of that palette and it's just been such a great go-to because sometimes like I want an, an all green look and having that green tinted highlight for the inner corner just like pulls it all together and it looks gorgeous so I love it. At first when I had this palette I got it because it was so pretty and I was like when am I actually going to use a purple highlighter on my face? When am I going to use it for this? But these are fine as eyeshadows and amazing as inner corner highlights which is what I've been using it for and it's been fantastic. I have one more favorite before we move on to the fails and oh are they fails. Um, this is from Lush. So I recently just finished up my R&B hair moisturizer. I love this for deep conditioning and also as like a leave-in kind of treatment for my poofy curly hair and also it smells amazing. It's okay so it's avocado butter and jasmine. It just like even though this is basically empty I keep it so I can do this. Ah, okay. So anyway, this is a bit pricey for the size, but it does last me a while. It only goes fast if I use the deep condition, but I love the way my hair smells and looks after I deep condition with this. So I was thinking, oh, I'm at the mall the other day. I had a bunch of these empties, so I went and turned those in and got a free Lush face mask, which was awesome. I also, sidebar, did the same thing at MAC and did a back to MAC for the first time and got this lipstick. So this is the... It's a satin lipstick in the shade Flesh Pot, which is just a nice nude. I didn't have anything really like cool toned nude, so I wanted to pick one of those up. So got this for free for turning in a whole bunch of uh, Fix Plus bottles and my, uh, the eyeshadow bottles. <laughs> I forgot what they're called. Ooh, shame on me. So anyway, I was in the mall basically turning in my recyclables to get free things and I was in Lush and I thought, you know what, treat yourself, get another one of these. And as I'm looking at it, the associate comes up and goes, oh, you know, we just came out with a new size of that. And it's like a jumbo size. And I'm like, uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> it's gigantic. This is 16.2 ounces. This thing is, so this behemoth 
is enough to deep condition with for quite some time. It smells amazing. It's definitely pricey. This was way more money than I was expecting to buy. I was actually going to go to other stores in the mall that day and I was like, after Lush, I'm done. <laughs> That's my budget. I'm done. This was probably close to like 60 bucks. Ah, yeah, I know. Oh, but I love it. And I love the jumbo size, <laughs> like the idea of it. So I don't know how often I would actually buy this again. Like I said, it was more of a treat for me after payday and after, you know, paying off some other stuff. So don't know how often I would go for this, but I know the product works amazing. I like the idea of a jumbo size. They also came out with a smaller size too, but I can't do the smaller size just because of how much hair I have. So <sighs> love the product. I just don't love the price point, but I'm willing to go for it because I know it works so well. And I'm glad that I got <laughs> the jumbo size. <laughs> also, just for a comparison, like this is the, that's the original and this is the jumbo. <laughs> Moving on now to the fails. Oh, these have caused me trauma. I, <laughs> uh, raise your hand if you've ever been personally victimized by this many primers and, oh, like I just, I felt, I felt personally victimized by these products. <laughs> Especially when like, you know, you're getting ready for work in the morning and you don't have time to redo your makeup. That's the worst. And you're using a new product and it just looks horrible and you can't fix it. You just gotta like live with it. Ugh, personal vendetta. Okay. So there's four products. The first two are primers that I was testing out and they're both marketed as matte primers, which I need now that it's hot as hell. The first one's from Milani. This is the Prime Shield Face Primer in Mattifying. It's also oil-free. Basically, okay, well, first off, it spits out like that. It's basically a, like, silicone-y feeling primer that's supposed to mattify and it looks a lot like and felt originally a lot like my favorite cover effects mattifying primer but this did not work well with any foundation that I tried it with. I immediately saw breakdowns like it was attaching and pulling at the foundation as I was putting it on and I tested this again with my favorite foundation so I know how this normally applies I know how it should behave and it didn't and the issue was this primer I tested this out a couple of times and every time I wore it my makeup looked terrible throughout the day it looked horrible and I don't need that it's not a good thing it did keep me matte but it made the rest of my face look like crap so <laughs> I would definitely not recommend let me just throw it. I would definitely not recommend this Milani primer. I still have, I think, the dewy version of this. I don't know. I gotta look in my primer drawer. But this one just did not work and it's getting decluttered. This next primer I am irrationally angry at because it's marketed to be with my favorite foundation and it doesn't work well with my favorite foundation. This is the Too Faced Primed and Peachy Cooling Matte Primer. I got this in a kit with some of the other peachy products from Too Faced a while ago and I saved this for the summer because that's when I would need a mattifying primer. And it's this one's got an interesting like consistency. It's okay, so it's like a it looks like a pore filling primer and that's kind of how it applies, but here we go. Right off the bat, it like pills like this and so as I'm rubbing it in and trying to work with it like I get like balls of product and I get pilling it does give you an actual like cooling sensation but it pills and I have to like work the pills out and work of that first next I applied the foundation it's meant to go with on top of it and it looked horrible I had patches of foundation that just wouldn't stick to it I it just looked like pock marks like there was it like oh it, it looked horrible bad to the point where I literally had to take the makeup off and start again I couldn't wear it. like this made the foundation unwearable and it's like it's marketed like you're supposed to go together and they don't I was personally victimized I tried this with other foundations of course and the same thing happened so I couldn't ever use this and I think this was actually part of the main reason why I got that Sex and the Peach kit is because I wanted to try this out. Next, I have a foundation that I tested out and it looked horrible. <laughs> and I will not let it touch my face again. This is a sample of the Tarte Found Sealer. So I got this as like a, a present 
my grandma went to Ulta and they gave her a whole bunch of samples and this was one of them. She doesn't really wear foundation. So I tested this out and originally, like at first when it applies, I liked the coverage and I liked how it felt. But by the time I put the rest of my makeup on, you know, like powder, concealer, everything, it just already was breaking down. Like this is when I'm still at my vanity, still in air conditioning. Nothing has done anything to break this foundation down. But by the time my makeup is done, it looks worse. <laughs> And throughout a full day, it looked even worse. I just, I felt embarrassed being out with this foundation on because it just did not work. It creased, it would break down kind of the same way the foundation did on top of the Too Faced primer, where I was get like spots that looked like an infection almost. Like, you know, when like your, your foundation like rubs away, but then there's a jagged edge to the whole, like it looked horrible. It looked terrible, but I gave it a shot and I'm just, that's gonna, that's gonna go now. My last fail is an affordable setting spray. I honestly forgot when I picked this up, but I was going through my collection and I found it again and I decided to give it a shot. This is from Hard Candy and this is $1 and this is the Glow Sheer Envy Illuminating Setting Spray plus Radiance Pearls. I kind of ignored that as I shouldn't have because I thought, oh, it's a glowy setting spray. Maybe this is a dupe for that Catrice setting spray that is so great. This is literally just chunky glitter. This is a spray full of chunky glitter. I got chunky glitter that ruined my entire look. It just was horrible. Oh, and I sprayed this right before I went to work and I just had to deal with the fact that my face was full of glitter. I'll show you guys on my hand because I'm not gonna sacrifice my face for this today. So we're gonna shake this. Oh my God. I really hope this is coming up. The lights might be drowning it out, but I just have glitter all over my arm now. And it's not even a good setting spray. Like it, it felt just like water with glitter. I feel like a twilight vampire. I've just got glitter all over here now. So it wasn't a good setting spray and it had chunky glitter in it and I can't recommend this. It was terrible. I was mortified when I looked in the mirror and saw what happened. I was like, holy crap, can I go outside like this? But I had to because, it, you know, setting spray is tough because it's the last step of your routine. Odds are you're about to get out the door, you're about to go to work. So when they do you wrong, they do you wrong. So I learned from my mistakes. Don't get it. All right, guys, so those are all of my recent favorites and fails. Let me know down below what your recent favorites and your last really big fail was. <laughs> uh, thank you guys for watching, and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye.